Yes, you read that title correctly. I think there's a pretty good chance that Apple's Mac Pro is coming this year and that it's actually gonna pack a new quad die chip. Yes, that's four dies instead of two that Apple just gave us with the M1 Ultra Max Studio. And no, it's not gonna look like this because this simply isn't possible because all the memory channels are getting blocked by the other dies. And while this is certainly a possibility that I'm open to, I don't think it's what Apple is gonna be doing because we just discovered some brand new Apple patents that reveal a new technology that is even more impressive. And before I get into all the leaks and rumors that are pointing to my conclusion of the Mac Pro still coming this year, as well as the patents that show how Apple could achieve the new quad chip, I wanna show you guys the new patents that reveal how Apple was able to create the M1 Ultra chip because it's just straight up genius. As you probably already know, the M1 Ultra uses two M1 Max dies connected together through the secret die to die interconnect that I actually showed you guys way back in December when someone took a real photo of the M1 Max. But what you probably don't know is that Apple is actually fusing them together while in the wafer printing process. So Apple essentially prints a bunch of M1 Max dies onto a wafer and then they run tests to change check for flaws within the dies, and if there are enough functioning cores inside of both neighboring M1 Max dies, Apple moves on to the next step in the wafer process using 2.5D technology to route over 10,000 signals through the interposer connecting both M1 Max dies to create what's known as the new ultra fusion connection with up to 2.5 terabytes per second of bandwidth. And then finally, they dice up the wafer into various M1 Ultra chips, as well as the M1 Max dies that didn't quite pass the core test. And for the M1 Max dies that had way too many flaws, the bottom half would be sliced off creating an M1 Pro die that Apple can still throw into a Mac and sell instead of having to throw it away, which is what makes this new M1 chip making process so profitable for Apple. But going back to the Ultra Fusion Interposer, if 2.5 terabytes per second sounds like overkill, I agree because the memory bandwidth is limited to 800 gigabytes per second. So the big question is why would Apple go so overboard with Ultra Fusion? Well, I think it's because they're giving it enough overhead to prepare for the Mac Pro's quad die chip. So before I get into Apple's patents for the new 3D printing technology that'll allow them to do this, let me first explain why I think this Mac Pro is still coming this year, despite Ming Chi Kuo saying that it's getting delayed until 2023. When Apple announced the M1 Ultra Mac Studio, Apple told us that they still have one more Mac to complete the ultra silicon transition, the Mac Pro. Making our transition nearly complete with just one more product to go, Mac Pro. Now the important thing to realize here is that Apple mentioned the word transition, which refers back to Apple announcing a two year transition of their Mac lineup over to Apple Silicon. So if Apple knew that they were delaying the Mac Pro until next year, then saying the word transition would be embarrassing if they failed on that promise by not transitioning the Mac Pro within the two year timeline. And the even bigger point is that Apple said that they would leave the announcement of the Mac Pro for another day, that is for another day. Which is 100% guaranteed to get some people to hold off on buying the brand new Mac Studio and wait for the Mac Pro. Well, that'll have, I guess, a new chip we haven't even heard about yet. And that's the one I'm gonna keep waiting for. So it would be incredibly stupid for Apple to say that they're saving the Mac Pro announcement for another day, but then have people waiting over a full year, not buying the Mac Studio and not buying any high-end Apple products. That would be very dumb. So because of that, I think Apple has confirmed that it's gonna be coming soon this year. And if you needed more confirmation, Ross Young has finally confirmed that his leaks for the 27 inch iMac Pro were actually wrong because his team didn't expect the new studio display to come with a webcam, speakers, and a built-in A13 chip. So he now believes that his 27-inch iMac Pro leaks 
were actually for the upcoming Studio Display XDR with a mini LED panel and 120Hz ProMotion, which has already gone into production and should be revealed at Apple's WWDC event. And if he is right, then I 100% guarantee that the new Mac Pro will also be revealed at the event because it makes zero sense to release a new display by itself. There needs to be a new Mac product to go alongside the display, just like Apple just did with the Studio Mac. But then going further, TA Tech 15 on Twitter confirmed that the Mac Studio only has one model number, regardless of the chip that's inside of it, which means that out of the three new Mac model numbers Apple registered with the EEC, there are still two of them remaining, which includes another desktop Mac, which I believe is the Mac Pro. And if the Mac Pro does get revealed at WWE, DC, then it would mean that we are in fact going to be getting something that's even more powerful than the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. Yes, a new quad die chip. However, there is a pretty big problem in terms of what the chip could be going into this machine because we were expecting the quad chip to be based on the M1 because Mark Gurman said that the Mac Pro will come with up to a 40 core chip with literally four M1 Max dies put together. And the crazy thing is that he was 100% right with all of his leaks about the 10 core M1 Max chip as well as the 20 core M1 Ultra chip, which he nailed perfectly. So how could he be wrong about the M1 quad chip? Well, first of all, Hector Martin, who was a software developer working to bring Linux to Apple Silicon, has confirmed that the M1 Max's interrupt controller only has support for two dies, which means that a four die chip is literally impossible if it's based on the M1. And because of that, Mark Gurman has literally just confirmed on his Twitter Spaces version of Power On that he believes that Apple has shifted the M1 Ultra Duo chip over to the M2 Ultra Duo. So this means that instead of a 40 core chip, we could actually see a 48 core chip because there are leaks from 9to5Mac saying that the M2 Pro and Max chips will actually have 12 CPU cores instead of 10. And in his Twitter spaces, Mark also confirmed that he thinks that the regular M2 chip will be announced between May and July, which makes a WWDC release likely. And then adding to all of this, we just got a couple of brand new leaks from sources like Mori QHD, who says that Apple is about to release a chip even better than the M1 Ultra, which hints at an M1 or M2 Ultra Duo chip. And then Leaks Apple Pro just gave us an exclusive leak mentioning that Apple is planning on releasing the Mac Pro this year with two or even four M1 Ultra chips alongside the studio display, but they won't be shipping until later in the year, maybe as late as December. So with all that said, let's finally get into these brand new patents that detail how Apple can make the quad die chip happen. Within some of the patents, they showed a new future die that has interconnects on both the left and right sides, which means that they can combine four dies side by side, interconnecting them all, which would mean that all of the RAM and IO connections would have to be on the top and bottom, which makes it a bit difficult unless Apple could use RAM stacking technology to stack two RAM packages on top of each other instead of having multiple RAM packages like they do on the M1 Ultra. However, this method of combining dies side by side could be probably problematic because the left die would have to send data through the middle dies all the way over to the right die, so I don't think that Apple is going to be going with this method. And now the other method which I think is much more likely is that Apple would literally take two M2 Ultra chips and stack them on top of each other like you see in this image. And the reason that this is the better method is because they can not only connect over 10,000 signals between the two M2 Max dies, but they can add even more signals vertically from the bottom M2 Ultra die up through a new vertical ultra fusion interposer into the second M2 Ultra chip 
which will interconnect all of them in the most efficient way possible. And this would allow the bottom left die to communicate directly with the top right die, kind of like in an X pattern, as well as to any other die in the M2 Ultra Duo chip. And if you think this sounds absolutely insane, check out these detailed screenshots from Apple's patents. The second package level dies and passive interposer chiplet may include active side face up toward the first package level that includes a plurality of contact pads and dialectic layer all or only a group of the plurality of dies may include a communication bridge routing, which is used to connect at least two chips from an adjacent package level. That right there is literally the Ultra Fusion Interposer going vertically to the second layer of dies. Moving further, a communication path can exist between any given pair of terminals. Thus, the communication bridges can be incorporated into the silicon within each and all act of dies where each die can be bonded to a pair of dies in an opposing package level to provide the communication path or die stitching between the two dies. But wait, there's more. In this manner, the dies can form a full 3D IC interconnect fabric along all the dies on all package levels. Passive silicon interposer stitching dies can also be included within the interconnect fabric. So this literally means stitching four dies together through an interposer like Ultra Fusion so they can all communicate together. And this is a quick sketch of what it could look like two ultras on top of each other. And if you're wondering how high the top die will sit on top of the bottom die, I think it'll literally be stacked flush on top of it. Micro bumps may utilize more conventional assembly techniques, while hybrid bonding with metal to metal and oxide to oxide bonding can achieve a high connection density and lower latency for higher end applications, as well as smaller Z height or vertical height. So if you wanna imagine how all of this will look like, this is a patent image of the M1 Ultra chip showing eight RAM chips as well as the two M1 Max dies. So here is my modified version showing how Apple can easily stack another Ultra chip onto the current one and then adapt the metal heat transfer cover for cooling. And if you're wondering how Apple could possibly cool this M2 Ultra Duo chip, I'll leave that for another video. But if you enjoyed seeing how Apple could make this Mac Pro quad chip possible, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe because we're getting our Mac Studio in very soon and we're gonna tear it down. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.